Hi, this is Mingyao from Jose Engineering and in this video I'll be going over the bolt tool in ANSYS Mechanical which helps you set up bolt simulations much faster. We're going to start with a space claim geometry of a bolt, uh, a couple of plates and some bolts together and let's do a static structural analysis. Okay, the geometry has been loaded in here. We have a couple of plates. Uh, these are modeled as, the left-hand ones are modeled as solids, the right-hand ones are modeled as shells. We have both explicitly, explicitly modeled here. We have them taken out over here and you can see there's corresponding holes on the shell side as well. The, sheet, the plates are two millimeters in thickness each. Now the bolt tool is under the ACT start page, under manage extensions, and let me shrink this so we can click on bolt tools. And you'll notice the bolt tool features pop up here. So let's take a look at how we set up these bolts. First we're going to do the explicitly modeled bolts. So under bolt tool there's an option to select instances of a pattern body. So it automatically selects all 10 bolts and we can turn these into beams. So this automatically creates a series of bolt components here and um, we can look at the, the properties of each one of these. It also converts the bolt geometry here into a construction geometry. So rather than an actual uh, uh, simulation model, it's no long, it will no longer be modeled because, it will be, uh, because the, the, the part is treated as a construction geometry. You can see we have some question marks here for remote points and that's because the bolt will actually be connected to the size of the head here uh, once we generate the mesh for the parts it's uh, the bolt uh, beam element will be connected to the nodes that slice within the, the head of the bolt and that's why there's a question mark because of the remote point is uh, connected to the name selection which is then connected to selecting the bolts in the area under the bolt head. So you can see that we create once we create this, um, everything checks out except for the contacts. Now we have a lot of contacts that don't work. So let's uh, we'll just go ahead and suppress this whole chain. So that makes it very easy to set up a bolt um, that you've explicitly modeled. The bolt themselves automatically take takes on the radius of the bolt shaft. You can see the red and the blue part that represents where the bolt is attached uh, onto the top surface here and in the threaded section. Now let's take a look at the, the beams, the, the shell side. There is a wizard called surface body hole wizard and this is a little bit more involved so we actually have to Let's go ahead and select these two, two pieces of geometry. Uh, the key thing here is whether you have geometric spot faces. So geometric spot faces, um, if you have geometric spot face representing the spot face, then you set it to yes. Otherwise, uh, the mesh can, will create the area to control. So again, the question is, how do you attach the bolts? We're going to create some beams in between to model the bolts here. Do you attach it? to the edges or to the surface. Uh, geometric spot faces means you have the surfaces cut, but here we're going to say no, so it'll actually create um, inflation layer mesh around the edges. Maximum distance, we'll set this to two. You can click on detect holes and it automatically draws in all of the holes that's found on these two shell surfaces. There's an option for hole meshing, how many layers, uh, the mass thickness, 
and uh, the growth rate, and then the beam connection. Uh, connection radius, uh, connection option, add probe, etc. So everything looks good here. I'm going to click on create all objects now. And it's created a series, it's, it's generating the mesh first, and then once it creates a mesh, it will um, connect the bolts to the inflation layers that it generates around each bolt or each beam element here. Okay. Okay, so you can see that we've created bolts now. The bolts are the size, the, the beams, uh, the beams are the size of the holes here and here. And in fact, they're connected. Uh, let's go find one of these beams. They're connected to the shells in the red and the blue dotted area. So rather than just connecting to the edge, these beams are actually properly connected. So we can close this now. Uh, you can do other things. You can, for example, add preloads to these beams. So we can, for example, um, preload these holes here. Hmm. Or we can preload those beams. So preloading a set of beams just involves clicking on the preload button and it'll create a set of preloads, post-processing as well. So some additional capabilities here under wizard. There's a setup wizard that allows you to create coordinate systems based on cylindrical bodies or you can select the geometry. We can create mesh. Uh, you can create name selections for different areas, then beams. This is a beta feature right now. Uh, you can add in pretension, add in contacts. So there's a, a lot of wizard available here. Uh, there's a lot of options for selection, whether it is to select geometry, or you can, or you can uh, select instances. We can create contacts for both thread modeling, both meshing, uh, add different types of coordinate system, preloads, beams, post-processing, etc. So, um, if we want to create bolts the old-fashioned way, for example, if I want to create a series of bolts in these holes, I can give you an, I can create an example of, of how that would work. So we can, for example, select a surface here and extend it to. Um, Select for geometries with the same uh, same size, or we can do a box, a, a, a drag a box around it like this. So let's go ahead and create a oh, name selection. So. Uh, and create a name selection. We'll call this one the top holes, and then uh, bottom holes. And we can manually create. So this is the the old way of of joining things together. We can create a beam. We'll make it one millimeter from here to here. It's a bit thick, so maybe half a, half a millimeter here. So I have a, a little short little beam over here. And what you can do is we can go to automation and do the object generator. So we have a lot of name selections now, but we can connect, for example, bottom hole, top hole to the bottom hole. Um, 
maybe between one and two, and click on generate. And you can see we, we've created a series of bolts here. Uh, these bolts will be connected to the cylinders, the top and bottom of the cylinder, so it should, it should work out okay. But obviously not quite as sophisticated as the bolts that's created either here or here. Um, now let's set up uh, this quick simulation. So we're going to do a fixed support on the bottom. We'll select both and put in a force in the x-axis of 100 newtons. And um, let's make sure the contacts are all suppressed. So it looks like the contacts are suppressed, which means the only thing holding this model together are the bolts. Now let's go ahead and solve. Okay, the simulation is completed. Well, let's take a look at the deformation. We can maybe uh, scale it up a little bit. You can see what happens when we pull on the, bolt, the, the two plates. Uh, we have the components for the bolt, each of the torque and shear, and that type of information and we have the ability to do, look at reaction probes uh, there's a post wizard for bolts or show summary table so there's a few python scripts we can use uh, the one here because we have modeled everything as beams we can beam probe uh, all the beams probes and absolute force so let's look at the beams let's uh, Look at beam probes. So I think maybe I have to highlight that. Um, let's try this. Select these beams. Beam probes. So here it shows me the axial, bending, torsional, and shear, and stress of each of the beam. We can also do beams here. Oh, this tells me the radius and length looks like there's some issues with that post processing. And let's look at absolute force. So here's just telling me the absolute axial torque and shear of the beams and bending. So if you have information on what is the maximum force that each of the bolt is allowed to to be exerted on, we got we have that information here. Take a look at the post wizard. So here we have uh, different types of APDL input and results. So let's look at beams. Maybe we can select the, the holes here. And oh, here here's an analysis. Oops. So here, let's select that. That's our analysis, and uh, these are the beams we want to. So in beta, so this could be improved. Um, let's try this one more time. Uh, 
Oh, I think maybe we select these beams up here. Right, here we go. Get beam results. There you go. So here's a table of element ID and uh, Oh, this is the force in the X torque SF force and uh, moment. We have the APTL results here. So uh, a number of different ways to allow you to quickly set up bolt models. Uh, we can model quickly extract bolts in 3D geometry, or if you have shell shells, that we have a capability to automatically create bolts. The best part is that if you look at the way these bolts are connected, we have uh, the spiders that's, that's created in uh, based on the size of the head, and you can also specify the size of the sp spiders here on the um, on shells. So, a quick demonstration of bolt modeling using Ansys Workbench Mechanical. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this, please subscribe to our channel, uh, or if you have any questions, please visit us at ozeninc.com. Thanks, and have a great day.